In my videos, I talk a lot about hooks. I kick off each of my reviews by looking at the key features of a game which are designed to catch the attention of consumers and retailers. But is this reasonable? Or is it greedy, exploitative and opportunistic? I received a comment on one of my videos from a viewer who wasn't happy with the product design focus I'm using in my videos, specifically the promotion of hooks. This viewer felt that the premise of hooks was patronising. It was treating gamers as a shoal of fish easily grabbed by gimmicks. It's sobering to receive negative feedback among the many, many warm comments I receive both publicly and in email and direct messages. I encourage feedback in every video, specifically because I like to hear what you all think about each topic that I discuss. So I thought it was worth reflecting on this viewer's criticism. Am I doing gamers a disservice? Treating them as naive and suggestible? Nobody wants to be manipulated, right? I'm Adam Porter. I'm a board game inventor from Cardiff in Wales, and over the last few years I've made many videos about board game design, and in the last year specifically I've focused heavily on games as products, exploring topics like onboarding, motivation, customer journeys, innovation, and design thinking. I've taken a new approach to my game reviews, putting less emphasis on gameplay and more on design choices. The concept of hooks is frequently discussed in game design circles, but that term is not necessarily familiar to players. So what exactly have I been banging on about all this time? Well, a hook is a feature which draws people in, something that piques their interest and motivates them to stick around to learn more. A novelist might start their tale with a particularly shocking passage, an outrageous event to be unpicked later, an insurmountable challenge for the principal character, which readers will them to overcome. A hook could even be a single sentence which captures the overarching theme. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in position of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. To be or not to be. That is the question. When pitching a screenplay for a television or film project, the hook is pivotal. It needs to be describable in one or two sentences, and it needs to be gripping. In music, a hook has a similar function to quickly catch the attention of a listener, but strong hooks also have another quality. They're memorable. They stick around in your head. You find yourself humming the tune in the shower or on your drive to work. A strong melodic hook can become an earworm. Games work a little bit differently from novels or films or music in that they're interactive. A player doesn't passively consume media. They don't sit back and watch a narrative unfold. They create that narrative. And this broadens what a hook can be. A hook for a board game could be thematic, it could be mechanical, it could be physical, or it could be contextual. A thematic hook for a game is plain to see. Why did I purchase Ravensburger's Jaws game? As fun as the hidden movement one versus all gameplay is, that wasn't the draw for me. The appeal was the nostalgia for the film. I was keen to immerse myself in that story, to relive some of my childhood memories in a new format. A mechanical hook could be a little bit harder to describe. Remember, a great hook only takes a sentence or two to put across. Quarto is a game with an incredible mechanical hook. When it's your turn, your opponent chooses which piece you play. Simple, clear, and yet it subverts everything we know about how board games are supposed to work. The more complex a game gets, the harder it is to put across its mechanical hook. A physical hook is the closest to what we might refer to as a gimmick. Though the word gimmick is a pejorative, and I don't consider a strong physical hook cynical or superficial, think of the vertical playing board in Connect 4, the pyramid dice shaker in Camel Up, or the bird box dice tower in Wingspan. A strong visual and tactile presence helps players to engage. A contextual hook encompasses anything else, but it often relates to the reputation of a game or a game maker. Libertalia was a very popular game back in 2012, but it soon went out of print and for several years players were unable to get their own copy. As time passed, that game became more and more desirable. We always want what we can't have. Stonemaier tapped into this increased demand with a new version of the game with a reimagined setting, reworked rule set, and attractive components. Hekmek am Kartenek, or Picomino the card game, offers a new experience to fans of the original dice game. A mirror image to Game Right's dice game re-implementation of Sushi Go. And just as moviegoers flock to the cinema to see the 27th Jurassic Park, 
Hobby gamers who love a particular title will be keen to play a sequel or later edition of that same game. But it's also clear that the word hook is used widely and inconsistently in different media. Its meaning is fluid and ambiguous. In literature, it's something you experience when you open the book for the first time and read that first passage. In tabletop terms, this would be the equivalent of hooking a player with an incredible first play of a game. In music, the hook is less intellectual and more visceral. It's about creating something memorable, something which sticks in your mind. In film, as in tabletop games, it's all about the pitch. So if we conclude that a hook is intended to pique interest, capture attention and engage a player, then really we should acknowledge the enormity of that task. As my commenter pointed out, gamers are not a shoal of fish. They have their own minds, their own values, attitudes and circumstances. A hook for one player is a turn-off for another. If you're going to devise a hook for your game, you really need to identify who you're trying to appeal to. Who is your potential audience and what are they looking for? We're going to look at player types and avatars in a future video. Working with hooks is all about empathy. It's not about opportunism. A design thinking approach puts the end user right at the start of the process. If you understand your player's needs at the earliest stage and identify your hook early, you're far more likely to create something useful to players, something of value. And in making this video, I hope I've offered something useful to designers out there. I hope you've found it valuable. If so, please do join in the discussion in the comments and let me know some of the best hooks you've seen in board games. And don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and explore some of the other game design videos on this channel. Until next time, all the best.